Exciting football game always gets my blood racing, remember? If I remember correctly, Temple was leading Lehigh by a touchdown. It was freezing. Freezing? I thought it was refreshing. That's because you had gloves to keep your hands warm, muffs to keep your ears warm, and my lips to keep everything else warm. October 18th, 1980. You remember the date? This woman never forgets the circumstances of a special first kiss. And neither does this man. Three minutes left in the third quarter. Morning, Arthur. Norma? Oh, hello there, Ernie. Still doing those morning jogs, trying to reclaim your youth? When was the last time you saw it? Battle of Bunker Hill? Ah, someone's a little cranky at the prospect of losing our little wager again, huh? Look, I know Jefferson's beaten Central for the past five years, but this year, we are gonna... Actually, we've stomped you the past six years, but uh, who's counting? In fact, I'm starting to feel a little embarrassed. If you tape it down, nobody will notice. You know... It must be horrible having to buy me a lobster dinner year after year. Not as horrible as watching the butter run down your chin. I tell you what, I hate seeing that sad expression when you have to pay so much that this time, you know what I'm going to do? What's that, Ernie? When the waiter comes and brings the check, I'm going to close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very witty for a Jefferson teacher. And don't count on that lobster just yet. This year, our team is going to have a whole new look. What, are you guys wearing pantyhose? Does the name DeAndre Davidson mean anything to you? Oh, yeah. You're Mr. Everything. That's right. He's so good, he can break off a 20-yard gain in his sleep. And he ought to be perfect for your team. Past six years, I thought they were asleep. <laughs> See ya! Look who's coming, Ren and Stumpy. Nice pin, Roy. How's the campaign coming? Ladies, you are looking at the next president of the sixth grade class. He's predicting a landslide. Good. Be under it. With Larry as your campaign manager, you're definitely in good hands. No offense, Larry, but what have you ever managed? He's managed not to look you in the face during the full moon. <laughs> Oh, not funny. Hey, ladies. Hey, DeAndre. So how's my best girl doing? I'm fine. Are you fun? Oh, you are fun. How's the team looking, D? We're gonna crush and pound Jefferson Friday, right? Oh, it's about to be on. All right now. They won't even get the license plate of the truck that rolled over them. I know that's right. Their children's children will feel the pain, okay? Go on, boy. We are going to the top. Preach! All the way to the top. No. Stop. I'm down with that. That's right. Well, it's about time. I mean, all those years losing, getting slaughtered and crucified, manhandled and mangled, running home, crying to your mamas. Go Central. Talk to you tonight. And I've got cheerleading. We're planning some amazing moves for the game. <laughs> so am I. This is so unbelievably unbelievable. Imagine you, one of the most respected teachers in the district agreeing to let me intern with you oh, i am so glad you said yes although i still don't understand why it took you six weeks to get back to me but that's all water under the bridge right the point is i am going to be the best teacher ever i mean other than you no one could ever surpass the great arthur bindleby that's very nice miss hamilton but i've memorized the entire teacher's handbook sir from cover to cover I see that you're one of the authors. See? Your name's right here. Thank you for pointing that out. Excuse me, son. Wow! How you handled that! Unbelievable! Prime example, Nadine. Rules. Teachers must implement rules. Hold that thought. Implement rules. See, teaching isn't just a day job. It's a way of life. 
Every now and then you'll get that bug in your ear telling you to bend the rule, but you can't. Students need to know that you're consistent. Consistency. <laughs> That's the key. This is exactly what I need. Exactly. All of it. it it's just... Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The exam consists of 35 multiple choice and, as a special treat, one essay question. Aww. Hey, 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 you only have to write one. I have to read 27. Each multiple choice is worth a point. The essay is worth 65 points. 35, 65, 100. I was a math major. The topic for your essay is American newspapers. Alive and well, or a dying breed. You need to give me four pages, single-spaced, or no credit. Good luck. You may begin. Listen, I need more copies of the test for my next class. And yes. you want me to monitor the class while you're gone? Well, not a... Uh, oh. It's not a bad idea. You think you can handle it? Yes, sir! When monitoring an exam, watch the student's eyes and remember, south is perfect and north is fine, but east or west, it's dishonesty time. I wrote that. Unbelievable! Okay, the way I have it figured, the red slips of paper are the kids who are gonna vote for Nathaniel. The blues would probably vote for you. What do you see, Roy? <sighs> Four little blue boats on a red sea. Exactly. We've got to do something that'll get people's attention. We got to think. I got it. You know how you can make milk squirt out of your eye? Forget it. The last time I tried that, it landed in my dad's oatmeal. <laughs> Look what we have here. My little opponent and his hard-working little campaign manager. Nathaniel. <laughs> Trust me, I have no interest in stealing any of your ideas. But if I did, I could give you a few pointers on how to win. What makes you so sure you're gonna win? First of all, everybody <laughs> likes me. Second, my parents have money. And third, everybody <laughs> likes me because my parents have money. Money can't buy everything, Bird. Really? I guess you haven't stepped outside lately. Yeah, that's what I thought. Grab some cotton candy. It's on me. <laughs> Problems, Arthur? This machine steals so much of my change, it's like my kids live in there. Here, take these. I found them wedged behind the cleaning supplies. Kidding? You going to the game Friday night? What miss it. Well, I'll be in the stands and my daughter will be on the sidelines cheering. And hopefully our football team will be stopping Jefferson! Whew. Where would we be without DeAndre? How'd it go? Unbelievable. Why did I know that? I already put the multiple choice answers through the Scantron. It is unbelievable how that thing works. <laughs> and the essays? Good. Almost everyone wrote the required four pages. Almost? DeAndre Davidson. What happened? I don't know. When the bell rang, that's all he had. <sighs> How are you gonna tell him? Tell him what? The teacher's manual, page 71, paragraph 4. Any student failing or not satisfactorily completing a semester or midterm exam is prohibited from participating in extracurricular activities, including athletics. Who wrote that? Unbelievable! All right. Well, I'm glad this happened to you. I mean, some other teacher might. Get a bug in his ear and bend the rules, right? But teachers have to implement the rules. Be consistent. Consistency. That's the key. That's the fool that kept DeAndre out of the game! Okay, who's first? All right, all three! Hut! 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 So unbelievable. I saw a movie just like this once where a teacher failed to star player right before a big game. What happened? They got annihilated. Oh, no, I meant with the teacher. Oh, well, that was even worse. But that was nothing compared to the way people started treating his family. Oh, oh they were humiliated, ostracized. But hey, it, it was just a movie. Breaking 
news. Results in the sixth grade presidential race at Central High have just come in. We have learned that underdog Roy Bindlebeep received only two votes. That's right, two. Some say it was poor planning, but most believe it was the recent scandal surrounding his father that took the poor boy down. His father, once a popular teacher at Central High School, actually had the nerve to fail DeAndre Davidson before the big game. Ridiculed by his father's action, the younger Bindlebeep was spotted today in a circus freak show act. And News 5 has exclusive footage. some more campaign flyers for Roy. Do you think he'll win? <sighs> That's hard to say. Are you all right? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, fine. Uh, look, there's something I have to do. Oh, I have to go, too. Some ladies from the church are coming over to talk about the bake sale. See you later. Sister Appleby, oh. Sister Long. Hello, Sister Long. Pleasure to see you tonight. We baked the cake for your family. <sighs> That's very thoughtful. Thank you. We want you to know the church full of support your family during this time of misery and misfortune. Yes! Thank you, sisters. It's a relief to know... What misery and misfortune? That controversy with that nice young man. What, what, what was his name again? Um, uh, Davis. No, no, David. No, 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 Davidson. DeAndre Davidson? That's his name, sister. He's an absolute saint. Oh, amen. Like last summer, when I rest my back and I was in so much pain, without being asked, he came over and made all my leaves. She had three trees, too. And he cut the grass. It's the chondra. Front yard. And back. Twice. For free. Amen. I understand, but I don't know what my husband can do about it. Give me that cake. But what about the bake sale? <laughs> Go stick your head in the oven. Dr. Bindleby, hey, what's up? Why don't you tell me? Uh, oh, yeah, that. Uh, what happened was I was sick. But not too sick to practice? What happened? Didn't you understand the question? Oh, of course I understood the question. That's all we've been talking about in class for the past two weeks. Look, I'm just not good at writing essays. Says who? All your written homework assignments have been fine. That's different, Dr. B. What's different about it? What do you have at home that you don't have in class? A magic computer? Yeah, something like that. to go? You need me for anything? No, I'm good. What are you gonna do? First thing is talk to DeAndre's parents. Well, I hope you get this settled before the word gets out what's going on. Woo! <laughs> that could get nasty. Because in that movie... Thanks, Nadine. I'll rent it. Of course, Hopkins, you could have given me a heart attack. <laughs> Don't tempt me. DeAndre talked to me after you left. You're not really gonna let that whole grade thing make him ineligible. Coach, look, this isn't any old game. There's a scout coming from Massachusetts State. College scouts coming to look at DeAndre? Nah, DeAndre's got scholarship offers from everywhere. I'm talking about me. They need an assistant coach, and I need a pay raise. So come on, can't you just look the other you way? You have some nerve. Do you know who you're talking to? Dr. Arthur Bindleby. Now let's just pretend this never happened, Mr. Coachman, because teaching isn't just a day job. It's a way of life. Uh. Don't worry. He's just one teacher. And unless he spreads the word, you should be fine. And remember, if things get rough, I've got your back. Dr. Bindlebeep, 
I'm sorry we're late. Late? We had to close the store 15 minutes early to get here. Store? Davidson's head to toe on 4th Street. Oh, right, right. Men's clothing. I bought a couple sports coats from you. Well, that's not one of them. Charles, you wanted to talk to us about DeAndre? That's right. Uh, you'd think a man with a PhD after his name would know how to work a phone. I wanted to speak to you in person. Your son didn't do well on an essay test in class today. I know. He told us. Which surprised me, because the essays he does for homework are always well-written. How long have you been doing his homework essays for? He didn't start out like that. At first, we were just trying to help him with grammar and things, and, oh, look, Dr. Bendel, we were only trying to help him. Lord knows he needs it. You should see the boy when he sits down to write something. He barely finishes one sentence. Then he crumbles up the paper and tosses it. Then he'll do it again and again. And because of that, you think he can't write an essay? There's some things you can just tell by looking at a fella. But like you, your pants. 35 waist, 34 length. Wow, wow, that's good, but... 42 regular in a jacket, even if it is a cheap one. Look, Mr. Davidson. And your shirts are 1533. You know, you're right. You can tell a lot just by looking at someone. Take DeAndre. He's a 17... A 17 what? A 17-year-old young man who's being treated like a little boy. Listen. No, you listen, sir. Our son has a gift. And because of that gift, he has scholarship offers on the table from 12 universities. Universities his mother and I never even dreamed of attending. And all he's got to do to have his pick of the litter is to maintain a GPA high enough for him to get in. Well, the grade he'll get in my class certainly won't help. Then we'll have him drop your class. He has enough units this semester. I checked. Always do. Drop the class, but he seems to enjoy it. I, I, I could work with him on his writing. That's what I'm here for. You mean after school? Forget it, Helen. DeAndre's plate is already too full. But, Mr. Davidson, what happens if DeAndre gets into one of those fine universities? Who's going to write his essays for him then? Tutors. Everyone knows athletes get help from tutors. But DeAndre won't be learning anything. There's a line from Shakespeare. Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Well, maybe... There's all this talk about fish making me hungry. Come on, Helen. It's supper time. Okay, fine. Have DeAndre drop my class, but there's one thing you should know. What's that? My shirt size is not a 1533. It's a 1534. Are you sure? Yes! Thanks, Larry. I won, Dad, I won! You're looking at the new president of the sixth grade. Hey, congratulations, son. But I thought the election wasn't until tomorrow. Doesn't matter. Nathaniel was disqualified. For what? His parents never got permission for that carnival. I guess it's against school rules or something. Yeah, let's hear it for rules. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, gentlemen. You were right. DeAndre does enjoy your class. So we were wondering, his mother and I, if maybe... If you know what. If maybe you could work with me. Mm hmm I'd be happy to. Are you sure his plate's not too full? Uh, Mrs. Davidson said that if I didn't give this a shot, the only way my plate would be full is if I filled it myself. When do you want to start? Come on in. Uh, pick him up in an hour? You better make it an hour and a half. Oh, and uh, Dr. Bindleby, you know that quote about teaching a man to fish? Mm hmm It wasn't Shakespeare. It's Chinese. Arthur? Unknown. Uh, well, what do you know? That's twice I've been wrong today. I checked my shirts. You were right. I am a 15, 33. Morning, sir. Hi, Nadine. So, are you all ready for your date with Destiny? The big Lebowski, the gunfight at OK Corral? Mm, you've been watching more movies? I'm talking about DeAndre. You have to turn in your grades by noon. Oh, well, I already did that. You mean now everybody knows that DeAndre can't play? Oh, he'll be playing. But... Check your teacher's handbook. Get chapter 12, page 79, paragraph 4. Instructor's discretion. If a teacher determines there are mitigating circumstances regarding a student's performance, that teacher may, at his discretion, award the student an incomplete until those circumstances have been remedied. <gasps> so you gave DeAndre an incomplete? I'm working with him on his writing skills. That's unbelievable! <laughs> no, Nadine, that's teaching. This is it! Oh, man, I need a chili dog. Mom, Dad, how exciting is this? Yeah. 
I'm thinking a six pounder baked potato cheese and chives. Thank you.